It's board game dessert time, folks. That's right. It's time for another game pie. This is when Mandy and I serve up a selection of games curated by our good taste and whims. It's not a top five. It's not a top ten because we <laughs> hate ranking things, but we love baked goods and pastry. So here we are with game pie. <laughs> And the game pie of the day today is a little different for us. Yeah. Building games in a digital playground. <laughs> I just realized the way we're saying that might be a little weird. It's basically digital games that have to do with building. There you go. That's right. I was feeling a little non-committal. So just have building. How that plays in your mind? Well, that's up to you. <laughs> well, with you, Mandy, it probably you probably interpreted it a little differently. Sure. And that's okay. Exactly. So please, Mandy, would you do the honors? Yeah. So um am I starting? Yes. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> okay. Well. The the first slice of pie for me is one that I've played a lot. And here's the funny thing. I own the physical version of this game, but I have several hours in a digital one. The other one remains on the shelf. I'm sorry. It'll get played eventually. But the digital one's just so easy. And that is Paperback Adventures. Uh, and, well, the building comes into this type of game because it is a... It would be considered a deck builder, right? Yes. Because we're, yes. we're trying to create words to fight the monster and in order to do that we need to acquire specific letter cards to build <laughs> that deck for battle just saying anyway i pl it's uh i think it's one or two player i play it solo mostly uh the digital obviously i play solo and even in the board version you can play solo or two player so paper break adventures mm, this pie is so delicious and yes there is a very good building theme there. I think I was bang on with this one. Thank you. Deck building, I accept that. I totally Thank accept you. it. I took the theme a little more literally, as you will see. <laughs> and first up for me is Nakora Sampan. Mm. And Mandy, we talk about digital games at the beginning of the show yes. often. And I don't think I've mentioned this one before, no. but this is a little game on Steam. It's got a very cute kind of pixely presentation. And it combines city building with card play and a match three mechanism. The cards represent the items that you can put out into the board. And when you get three like items together, they combine into a single advanced item. When mm -hmm. you put three of those together, they combine to an uber advanced item, that kind of thing. And so you're trying to position things like plants near water or animals near a barn, et cetera, et cetera. And as you go, your city gets bigger and bigger and your positioning gets tougher and tougher. You can add new cards to your deck as you go. So there's a little bit of deck building, not a ton, but a little bit of deck building in there. I've really enjoyed this one, and I feel like it flew a little under the radar for people yeah. in our community. So Nakora Sampan, I wanted to highlight. That sounds good. I like anything with kind of city building or anything like that. Yeah. I am Real here thing. for it. I'm going to check this out. Well, my second slice of pie, well, it's a stretch, but you know me. I can make a stretch work. <laughs> so, Absolutely. So my second slice of pie is potion craft so i think i've mentioned potion craft before mm -hmm. but yeah. it is a game that's on steam it's a digital game so this isn't a board game or anything that's solely on steam and in the game you are trying to build <laughs> your rep repertoire of plants to make well potions that is literally the game crafting potions and you need to acquire certain types of herbs and plants to make the right types of potions for your clients <laughs> that are coming in to help them with whatever they need and to progress on this path and set up your really cool machine that needs to get done before the end of the game. So I say the building aspect here is building a repertoire of fabulous potions. Yes. And not collecting a fabulous repertoire. Listen, all right. All right. I'm going to go with building. Collecting could probably was probably the more appropriate term, but guess what? It's like, the whole is it's a your world, Mandy. We just live in it, babe. We're doing a thing. So, people who listen know how this is going to work. We're going to go with building it up, building it up. 
So potion craft. <laughs> Got it. All right, next slice of pie for me is Dot Age. This is a fairly recently released game on Steam. It is a roguelite city building game, and this one has a lot of legs and a lot of depth. I'm just getting into it, and, and it just is growing and growing where you are going to have different villagers and you're sending them out to do different tasks, collecting resources so you can get more access to buildings, et cetera, and things like that. Uh, there is that roguelite element to it. So yeah. it's different every time you play. And I just find it really engaging and really interesting. And it's one of those that I can sense there's like, this is a game you could really, really get into and really nice. exploit all of the you know nuances and tech trees and things like that. So yeah. I suspect some of our friends here would really enjoy Dot Age. I don't think I know this one, so I'll have to... It's pretty new. It's pretty new. It's new. Okay, yeah, and everybody knows that. Well, you know, I wait till everything goes on discount before I buy it, so I'll add it to the list. You're frugal. <laughs> All right, well, my third slice of pie is uh, one I think I, uh, I've also mentioned on the on the podcast, and that is Words Can Kill. It sounds okay. way more ominous and wild than it actually is, but it's another kind of, in this game, it's not uh, cards that you're you're kind of building a deck for, but tiles. And you're trying to create words in this game to, well, kill your enemy. So it actually has a very similar aspect to paperback adventures, but it kind of takes it a step further because you get equipment that can help you. You know, you can get like a sword or, you know, a hat and jackets and things like that that are going to help you kind of amp up your attack but the goal here is to build your gosh I like this word today repertoire of tiles <laughs> that you can use to uh, attack uh, your enemies and again progressing through a map or tree uh, it, while doing so so words can kill again another game that's not super expensive really simple at the heart of it but a lot of fun I, I like a lot of word games what can I say I enjoy word games too. And word games is interesting because a lot of people don't like word games, but no, I'm, I'm personally a fan. Yeah. All right. Next digital playground building games for me is stack lands. This is a, on steam, but it's also recently released on mobile platforms Ooh. as well. It is another village builder, but this one is entirely card based. So you're going to have representations of cards that say rock and tree <laughs> or person or berries because oh you gotta feed your villagers in this one folks oh you're gonna be picking a lot of berries but uh you can also like will unlock cards and you will open pa packs of cards so sometimes you're gonna invest in a pack of cards and it's a little random on what you're gonna get okay. so but it, but that's kind of fun as well at least to me. So Stacklands, it's another one where there's a nice amount of depth to this one. They just released uh, or have an upcoming expansion that I'm going to be checking out too. I'm looking forward to trying that as well. So Stacklands, card-based village builder. I think y'all will like, check it out. I think I have this one. I think I saw it on your list. I think I possibly bought it or it's on my list for sure to check out. So. It's been out for a little while. So it probably went on sale enough for you to pick it up, Mandy. I love that you you know how my my purchasing of apps work. And uh, well, my last slice of pie is actually one that was recommended to me by Suzanne. And Suzanne had mentioned this on the podcast at one point, and that's Crummit's Tale. So this one would be, well, in this game, it's, you're, you're, I, don't know, I feel like I want to, Suzanne's word of collecting, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to say building, because <laughs> that's what we're doing today. <laughs> And in this game, it's, well, okay. I mean, you are technically collecting items that you could use, but you're building your closet of collectible items to use in the game to attack enemies. I'm going to go with that. I like it. And <laughs> it's really cool because I really kind of like that, like, grid system they have where things kind of, like, you can pick certain things to like amp up a weapon or if it's an enemy that you can attack, you know, and it kind of like shifts things around a little bit, moves them off screen anyway, but you're trying to collect things, you know, in order to, to take them out, uh, your enemies out. So it kind of falls in line with a lot of the other games that I was trying to do, collect things or build the things, get the things, use the things to attack and kill the enemy. So there's like a, a few of these games though, in the series, if I'm not mistaken. You had mentioned Crummit's Tale, and I think there was another one. 
that I don't. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah. gonna pull a blank on the specific name. Okay. But yeah. this designer developer is one that they just consistently produce phenomenal digital game designs that are clearly influenced by kind of board game elements yeah. as well. And and maybe it's not fair to assign game mechanisms to one or the other, but uh, Kremit's Tale and all the games from that particular group are right. worth a look for sure. Very, very nice. And the art, I actually think the art's kind of cute. Like it's, it's like kind of scary, but not scary, but like cute, scary. I can't explain it. You got to go check it out. So Kremit's Tale, thank you, Suzanne, for showing me this game. I have a lot of fun with it, even though I'm really bad at it. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, if you, I had to be good at a game to enjoy it, mm, cool. I wouldn't like very many games. <laughs> All right. Last slice of game pie for this episode. Dice Tribes Ambitions. Mm. Dice Tribes is actually, as far as I know, it's only on Steam, oh. but it is very much a worker placement game. Nice. You are building up your village. So again, that village builder heart to it. But you will literally have a certain number of workers and there are certain spots. It's all very abstracted. So whereas like Nikora Sampan or Dot Age has a visual representation of the cute little buildings and people wandering around and trees, Dice Tribes is much more like here's a row of stuff and (laughs) here's the row for the forest. And these are like the little placards where you're going to be placing your virtual workers. So in that way, it really does feel like a board game. In, in that kind of abstracted worker placement way. Again, this is one that feels like it has a lot of depth to it. It's one where the options as you do certain areas are going to vary between mm-hmm. games. So there's that variability that you can sometimes get in digital implementations that you can't necessarily easy get easily get in a physical edition. I admit I haven't played it a lot, partly because it's one of those games that when I sit down, you got to invest a little bit of time to really get the most out of your play session. And there's so much in it to explore. But really, if you like worker placement games and you want to try something different, Dice Tribes Ambitions, definitely worth checking out. Okay. Another one I don't have so (laughs) more yeah maybe you might like this one but it definitely has you know some meat to it yeah which i'm might be perfect for you kind of here for so i'll add it add it to the list or the inventory i gotta say inventory list versus library list jeez louise yeah not your collection you're building it up right i'm building that inventory list exactly (laughs) (laughs) well all right because i love you i'll let you get away with it yay Well, folks, we'll call that an episode. Thank you so much. If you have any questions about the digital games that we talked about and want to know more or have any recommendations, you can feel free to email us at saltandsassgames at gmail.com. Or you can jump into the episode thread on our Board Game Geek Guild. That is guild number 4131 on boardgamegeek.com. And we always love seeing some of you there some of you are really stalwarts and you always jump in and we love you so much for it so thank you for that absolutely (laughs) and of course we're all over the social medias as well oh my gosh all the socials so you if you watch a lot of the streams or want to check out the streams you can find us on twitch and youtube i don't know why i wanted to go backwards there (laughs) at twitch and youtube at salt and sass games uh we are also on the twitter yes i said the twitter at salt and sass games so not and salt and sass games you can find me on instagram twitter tumblr blue sky at 613 mandy and that's mandy with an i how about you suzanne and you can find me on most of the social media platforms <laughs> at 425 Suzanne. So I hope that until next episode, you are enjoying the fall season, that you stay hydrated, and that you get to play lots of games. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye, everybody. This episode was sponsored by Druid City Games, where player experience comes first. Check out all of their great games at druidcitygames.com.